All right, so this is Dee. She is a sales coach for 10 years. I'm really excited to have her on this live because she's gonna share with us a little bit about her story. Her and I met over on Threads. So if you're not on Threads, you need to be. It is a great spot to connect with other, um, connect with your target audience, connect with other business owners, especially. And so meeting Dee was such a blessing because she was what I called one of the OG thread people back in November that I connected with. So it was really cool to get to know her and see her journey. So I'm actually going to let Dee share a little bit about her story, how she got started, and tell us a little bit about what she does. Okay, so we did meet on Threads. Threads is absolutely incredible. Um, my story is pretty simply put. Um, a couple of people know me from being at Zillow for years in sales. And short story on a Taco Tequila Tuesday like today, um, I actually got laid off without warning. Oh, and wow. yeah, it was just middle of the day, sunny, bright day like this, 80 degrees, and I just got a notification to join a Zoom call and was told that pretty much uh, your position has been eliminated oh, wow. as of today. <laughs> and I have, I mean, sales is truly my passion. I can sell anything and everything, service-based, product-based, and I always wanted to have my own sales academy or go yeah. out on my own doing sales coaching, yeah. right? But I think that when this all happened, it was the push that I needed to kind of like leave the nest and I left the nest. And yeah. since launching the sales loss, like I have not, you know, looked back since. <laughs> and so can you tell me a little bit about your story of when you actually started like how long ago that did, did you start in business so so when did this happen with zillow if you don't mind me asking no not at all this happened in 2022 we were kind of like the beginning of what i think a lot of people experienced actually last year in the beginning of this year we were the beginning of the mass layoffs kind of thing happening oh. it was just oh. The same week, it was Zillow did a massive layoff, Salesforce, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. It was like literally that was the five wow. on the five days of that week. And I know like so many people, you go on LinkedIn, you even go on threads and you yeah. see like so many people are talking about like they're struggling in the job market or I've been looking for nine months and nobody will call you back. Yeah. So that's where I... <laughs> kind of started and after the grieving process of mm -hmm. you know like this company is not my whole identity yeah. like i know who i am and what i enjoy doing which has always been sales let's take a bet on ourselves and see what happens yeah and see i like that you said let's make a bet on ourselves because i think when someone starts in a business you're literally betting on yourself and you're your own biggest cheerleader and so you kind of pump yourself up and you're like okay i'm all in and i'm doing this and for you it was more like i don't have another choice like i have to this has to work for me <laughs> i'm not going back it has to work it was just i'm here in new york it was just i am not commuting anymore i am not doing any of that anymore some i need to make this work like yeah no matter what it takes like i need to make this work yeah now your business what exactly do you do what kind of business do you have and what do you do in that business so what i have is a sales consulting and strategy business and basically it is sales content and business strategy for entrepreneurs and then for content creators as well because i want content creators to understand that what they're actually doing is a sales cycle in order to get a brand deal and that they need to treat this like an actual business. Yeah. The same way that we are pitching people in sales is the same way that creators need to be pitching the brands that they want to work with if they want to be taken seriously yeah. and actually get the conversion, which in this case is a brand deal or receiving PR kits, any of that fun stuff. So that is the sales lost in a nutshell. 
Okay, that's really cool. And then sales loft was your first thing you started two years ago, or that came after like tweaking and all that? No, that was that was <laughs> the it. start. And I kind of like I said, I went. I think that a lot of people try to fast forward through the grieving process of a layoff yeah. and don't like stop and take a moment and understand that you were getting up and going to this job like every day and you saw coworkers that you saw more than your own family yeah. and you need to take a moment <laughs> and a beat to let that all digest and settle and after i did that it was just i'm not gonna go backwards like we're moving forward yeah. right so let's just let's just do it like yeah. you can figure out how we're gonna do this sales strategy and sales consulting what is it gonna look like to people how am i gonna do the offers and so on okay cool cool now um if you could go back to yourself when you first started your business what would you do differently if you're going back to 2022 when you started what would you do differently then I thought about this. What I would do differently is tell my younger self, and I mean, younger self is in like two years ago. <laughs> That's still younger. <laughs> right? <laughs> like two years ago is to one, understand that there really isn't a such thing as funny enough imposter syndrome because okay. if you think about it, you can't be an imposter if you are impersonating yourself. If you were taking actions to be your future better self, whatever that looks looks like for yeah. you, you're not really a fraud. I stopped myself from taking certain opportunities and trying different things because I was suffering from a huge case of imposter syndrome. Yeah, I felt like no one's gonna in like actually receive my content or I'm actually not going to get clients and maybe yeah. people are going to think that what I'm doing is like cringy and maybe I am cringy. Yeah. You kind of just have to, if I'm impersonating myself, then I can't be an imposter. So just do what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And once I started to do that is actually mm -hmm. funny enough when the clients started to come in, mm -hmm. people started to, uh, take advantage of my offers online people started to actually ask for the advice that i was bursting to give and yeah share the stuff that i was sharing with real estate agents with other people and other business owners other niches like people finally started to take advantage once i relaxed and just said i'm doing what i want you can either like it you can not like not, it you yeah can mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> So I love that you said you want to help content creators and you want to kind of show them like how this is actually a sales strategy you're doing by pitching yourself. And so I want to kind of dig a little bit more about that. What made you want to focus on that target audience specifically? Like when was the, the light bulb that was like, that's who I'm talking to? I've always been a creative and I love anything that has to do with that. I've always loved all the UGC, like the user generated stuff and always wanted to find a way to actually incorporate that stuff into my own work. Yeah. And funny enough, I wasn't taking my own advice, but I was seeing so many other people on platforms like threads, even on Instagram, on other forums complaining about, you know, I'm trying so hard and I'm not getting brand deals and I'm not getting this and I'm yeah. not getting that. And to me, what was so simple, I was like, this is like a, this is a sales pitch. Like I was yeah. able to identify what they were doing wrong so easily and just like pull it apart that I was just like, I shouldn't be doing this stuff. Like I should be helping other people do this stuff. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a fitness influencer, I'm over here eating like white cheddar cheese. It's you're going to get up and go to the gym. Let me help you <laughs> get this brand deal yeah. with this like athleisure line. Cause I can see the holes in your actual sales process. So the problem you solve is helping, helping content creators.
creators land brand deals by you know yep. not overthinking or 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 create by, i'm sorry by creating a sales strategy to pitch your offer that's exactly it okay. and then for the existing entrepreneurs and business owners the way that they're going to keep their pipeline fresh whether you're a service-based provider if you're looking for people to continue booking appointments from you or if you are a product-based business and you're looking to have more of those products move off of the shelf it's all about the actual sales strategy like we can't just keep i'm going to create a hundred reels and like hope that something sticks yeah. what's the actual journey that the customer is going on with you yeah. that's gonna make them mm -hmm. buy mm -hmm. and it took me a long 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 time to figure that part out because i was what you're saying i used to just be like let me pump out reels let me pump out you know content and hopefully somebody will be like hey i'm interested in you you know it did happen like randomly two of my clients found me on threads and they signed up with me through that, but that is one of those unicorn moments where it's just not going to happen all the time. And because it happened once in my mind, I'm like, it happened once it can happen again and again. And it was like, no, like you actually have to come up with a strategy to get people to be interested in what you're selling because they're getting information thrown at them every day. And so how are you going to stand? Out? And that's where you help content creators and business owners stand out above the noise absolutely i know that you and i were talking about it and i was telling you that when you go back to 2018 and 2019 if you were actually talking to your customers or your prospects or whoever it was if you were pumping out your information three to five times like a week it was completely fine yeah and now after the pandemic they are saying that like people need to literally be delivered information anywhere from 21 to 30 times in order for them to take action because mm. they're being bombarded with so much stuff all the yeah. time it's just you have to do it if you want to cut through that noise for people to even see your offer understand the offer and then take advantage of it yeah and that's that's good that you said that number because I know there's probably people who will watch this and be like, wow, I've been only doing like one to two reels like a week. Like, and you see people, you see people, and I see them on threads. They'll say, I went from posting three times a day to posting three times a week, and my engagement skyrocketed, and my like views rocketed, or whatever, whatever. And it's I want to know like how are your sales when you stop doing that? Like how are you bringing in more sales? Because if the goal is engagement, if the goal is like it's crazy, so many strategies that there is in a business. But if your goal is social media strategy, then yes, you're winning. But if you're not making sales, then something's got to give. And so that's why knowing this, and when you told me that yesterday when we met it really was an eye opener to me that man like i have to be consistent and you said another word and you sent it to me it was consistency plus something equals cohesive <laughs> cohesive I was like, it's another c word <laughs> it's the consistency and having a cohesive message is what actually brings in the cash you don't want to confuse a confused buyer does not buy it doesn't matter what it is and yeah. when you and i were talking i was just saying to you like you ever pay attention to bath and body works yeah. and there's like emails where they have room sprays they have soap they have the candles they have all of these things but whatever they decide they're focusing on that week if the candles the three wick is on sale for Twelve ninety five. They are literally are sending you five emails in a day, text messages if you're on their list. Yeah. All of their reels and carousels are dedicated to the fact that the three wick candles are on sale for twelve ninety five. They're not talking about the room spray or the hand soaps or anything else that you can get from them yeah. because they want you to focus on the cohesive message. I'm gonna keep telling you until you get it through your head that the candles are on sale for $12.95 and you buy one. Then we'll move on to the next thing. So it's yeah. consistently giving that cohesive message 
is what gets people to actually transact. Yeah, yeah because I had, um, it works, uh, I, I don't know, if it, oh, it was a Prime, Amazon Prime. They sent me emails three times a day. I got the text message. I got the reminder on my app. And then I got a pop-up on like, I think Instagram. And, and I was like, and I ended up spending money. <laughs> I was just about to say, are we going to say our life? Because <laughs> we all, when it came to Prime Day, the way that they kept pumping that consistent, cohesive message, Prime Day is on the 17th. What was it? The 16th and the 17th? It's like burned into our brains. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we were just like, it's the 16th and the 17th. It's the 16th and the 17th. It doesn't matter. Anything that you are looking for, get it on Prime Day on the 16th yeah. and the 17th. And it that's what worked. It made yeah. us all literally spend everything yeah. on Prime Day. Yeah, and buy and buy Christmas gifts in July, you know. So that's that's a that's a really good thing to to remember. And I'm definitely working. I'm I'm doing that with my content, and that really was helpful. And I hope it helps someone else as well do their content like that. And so, where um, where is your current offer like how can people get a, get a hold of you can, can you tell us a little bit more about your current offer that you have and where we can find more information about it absolutely so the easiest way that you guys can take advantage of things is i want you guys to like i said get consistent with a cohesive message yeah. so if you guys comment the word content on any post of mine on instagram you guys will get access to a content mastery planner that literally lays everything out for you, not just for this platform. If you want to get consistent on LinkedIn, on YouTube, with shorts, if you want to get consistent on TikTok, it does not matter. It is about creating an actual mapped out plan. What are my hooks? and my call to actions and what keywords am I going to use? And in that content mastery plan, it does all of that for you guys. Everything else that you guys will need to kind of scale your business yeah. or actually work with me one-on-one -on -one to do so, or if you're a content creator, is all available at thesaleswealth.com. So link welcome. is right in my bio. All right. I'll make sure to put that tag you on it and i'll make sure to to tell them to put the the content word in any of your 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 content pieces so they can get your content mastery that's really good information i i i'm so happy we did this i learned so much from you literally changed how because because like i told you like i was doing different like i was having different messages for different platforms because i thought, thought you were supposed to do like have it here differently and then talking to you my brand coach she was like, no, like, no, she's right. Just do a straight ahead all the way across. So it all just blends in or everybody will be confused. Um, hi, Mara. And so I'm so glad that that I had you on this live, D. And I hope we can do it again. This was really fun. And I would love to have you again and kind of just hear more about like your journey and where you you came from and and you didn't even say it on here but you worked with bing which if you don't know what bing doc, bing dot com is you're a little too young to be on here <laughs> i was gonna say we are aging ourselves but i mean yeah <laughs> i've worked with some uh platforms that uh don't really exist anymore if there's any gen z kids in the chat but <laughs> it's yeah yeah, so I can't I, I can't wait to do this again. This was so, so great. And I again, thank you so much for helping me yesterday really changed everything. And the thing that you sent me also was such a blessing that video you sent me of the girl explaining that was that, that was for me. I've got to just make the time to just sit down, create a schedule. And even when I and I think that's the last thing that I'll say, like, when I tell everybody get consistent, it doesn't have to be my consistency where I literally make a post every single day and I have seen the actual yeah. change. I've actually gone from reaching 2,000 accounts to, as of Sunday, 16,000 in posting every single day for two straight months. You guys need to create consistency around your schedule. Yeah. So if that means four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, if those are your posting days, just stick to it. 
yeah. so that the algorithm and everything else can get used to you and expect, okay, she's going to post every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I should start, I should show her stuff to her audience. Yeah. Because they're looking for it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much, girl. That That's, a lot of us think consistency is posting every day. I know I'm guilty of that. So it's consistency to works works for your lifestyle, your stage of life, and where you're at. So I appreciate having you here, girl. And I will send you the recording of this because I think we talked about that. I'll send you the recording so you can have it as well. So thank you for, for joining, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. God bless. Bye. Bye, Bye guys.